Hey, if you'd like to support the production of more Move University video tutorials, then please visit the support Move section on MoveUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. Last one is HDL or high density lipoprotein, often called good cholesterol. It is the smallest of the lipoproteins and it is the most dense lipoprotein, hence high density lipoprotein. It is produced in the liver and intestine. And one really important bit of information about it is that it has LCAT. What is LCAT? LCAT is an enzyme and it is stands for less thin cholesterol acyl transferase. So what it does is it basically takes cholesterol and turns it into a cholesterol ester, something that I mentioned in the apoproteins uh, video um, about apoprotein A1. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. But basically, it takes cholesterols and turns them into cholesterol esters. And we've actually seen another enzyme do this. It was ACAT, which was acyl, um, acyl-CoA cholesterol acyl transferase. Um, so the acyl group came from an acyl-CoA. In this case, the acyl group is not coming from an acyl-CoA. It's instead coming from lecithin, or phosphatidylcholine, which looks like this. So it's actually a phospholipid. And so what happens is that the acyl group on carbon on the second carbon of the glycerol backbone is actually going to be taken off and given to the cholesterol to, to basically be that acyl group that gets attached to make the cholesterol ester. And then um, on the second carbon, we just have an OH group left here. So um, we basically take this R or this acyl group and attach it here to give our cholesterol ester. And all we're left with here is an OH group, which gives us lysyl lecithin. Okay. So that's what LCAT does. And this is pretty important because HDL needs to take the cholesterols. Um, well, actually, before I even mention that, let's talk about the, the function of, of of HDL. Its main function is reverse cholesterol transport, which basically means that it's going to take cholesterol from the peripheral tissues back to the liver. So um, why is LCAT important? Well, because LCAT takes the if, if HDL takes up the cholesterol from these cells, it has to make sure that it doesn't lose them. When it, before it takes it back to the liver. So it takes the cholesterols up from the cells and converts them into these cholesterol esters so that they can't escape, and then it takes them back to the, to the um, liver as cholesterol esters. Another thing that HDL is important for is that it exchanges apoproteins with other lipoprotein particles. So its main apoproteins, uh, or its main apoprotein, uh, is A1, and that's because it activates LCAT which we mentioned earlier, so that's super important. Also, uh, it has C2 as well as E, and it gives those to chylomicrons and also gives them to VLDLs, as we saw um, in the other videos. Now, reverse cholesterol transport is pretty important, but it's especially important in a particular tissue. Which tissue? Or what kind of tissue? Vascular tissue. Because in vascular tissue, uh, we're talking about HDL taking these these uh, this cholesterol out of those cells because due to the, well, excuse me, <laughs> kind of fumbled over the, over my words a little bit. Basically, to lower the possibility of forming atherosclerotic plaques. Sclerotic plaques and plaques. So. If we take the cholesterol out of these cells, um, we can allow LDL to deliver cholesterol to those cells. Um, basically, the ratio of what between LDL and L HDL is important. We'll see that how that works in just a second. But HDL kind of has an anti-atherosclerotic. Uh, it is kind of anti-atherosclerotic in that it takes these cholesterol cholesterol molecules away from these cells, and it's it's especially important in vascular tissue so that we don't have these. Uh, these plaques develop and eventually obstruct blood flow. Again, more on that in another video. So how is HDL made? Uh, there are three different ways where HDL can be made. Um, one way is the one that we're kind of going to look at in the diagram below, is um, all the components are put together in the liver or in the intestine. We're going to think about it as far as the liver goes. Um, another way is that HDL can be formed from the budding off of aboproteins from chylomicrons. 
um, which kind of explains the parentheses from chylomicron's portion in the chart on the apoproteins in part two of the series. So I encourage you to check that out uh, if you haven't already. Uh, another thing is that freely circulating APOA1s can just pick up lipid, lipid, lipid components and form an HDO lipoprotein. So that, that's how you make the nascent uh, HDLs, and they can, then they have to mature. Uh, though the maturation is not very well understood, basically what happens is that you have a shell-like HDL, which can become globular, and it, it, what is involved, uh, what is known as involved is uh, the addition of phospholipids, cholesterol, and cholesterol esters to the nascent particle to give you the mature particle. Now, the mechanism by which it actually occurs is unknown. It's not well, un well, it's not well understood. So I don't really know too much about it, but I do know, or I, I did discover this much. So let's look at the diagram to s sort of follow HDL and what it does. So let's start up here at the top where we have HDL. Um, it's got A1, C2, and E all attached to it. It's got LCAT in there, and we said that it, it exchanges uh, the apoproteins with other lipoprotein particles, including the chylomicrons and VLDLs, so it's going to give C2 and E to both the chylomicron to allow that to mature, and it also gives it to the VLDL to allow that to mature. When it does that, it ends up having just, uh, just the A1 down here on the right, and then what it does, it goes to these peripheral tissues and it takes cholesterols, cholesterol molecules, from peripheral tissues and it picks them up. And then once it does pick them up, it's got these cholesterols, it has the, the LCAT available so as to convert these cholesterols into cholesterol esters so that they do not escape the lipoprotein particle. Then what they can do, the key thing here, is to follow this arrow where they'll be taken back to the liver. And on the way there, um, APO, APO E and APO C2 uh, will come back onto the HDL particle. And this is because, uh, you see these little asterisks here, is because after the chylomicrons and VLDLs are digested, the APO um, C2 and APO E can go back to the HDL. And that's good because we need HDL to be able to, to be taken up by the liver, and it needs that APO E to bind the APO E receptor so that it can be taken up and these lysosomes can then fuse with the particle and then give us the cholesterol back in the liver here. Okay, And of course that cholesterol can give us steroids or bile salts or whatever um, uh, whatever the cells need. Okay, Now that's this is basically so if we're thinking about reverse cholesterol transport we're really thinking about about this part here right reverse cholesterol transport RCT here taking these cholesterols into the HDL and then taking them along this this uh, line here right back to the liver that's reverse cholesterol transport now there is this protein called uh, cholesterol ester transfer protein abbreviated as CETP which is shown here and what that does is that mediates the sort of trade that HDL particles can have with VLDL particles. So basically, HDL can take its cholesterol esters and give them to the VLDLs in exchange for triglycerides. Triglycerides would be given uh, to the HDL uh, from VLDLs. Now, I'm actually not sure why this occurs. I know that it happens and that CETP uh, gives us up, um, and I'm not, but I'm not really sure why this would actually occur. Um, this kind of gets in the way of reverse cholesterol transport. And this VLDL, of course, can give rise to IDL or LDL. And what that would end up meaning is that we could potentially have um, more cholesterol, more LDL cholesterol in the blood. So CETP, uh, I'm not really exactly sure what its purpose is. I looked it up a little bit, but I, I couldn't really find much on it, other than the idea that there are thoughts that there can be drugs that inhibit this so as to treat hypercholesterolemia. Because, like I said, this kind of gets in the way of reverse cholesterol transport, right? Because it's not letting HDL take cholesterol esters back to the liver like it's supposed to. So, um, so the idea is that if 
CETP can be inhibited, more HDL can allow, more HDL can actually get reverse cholesterol transport to happen. So, um, so CETP inhibitors are, are being investigated as potential um, uh, treatments for, for uh, hypercholesterolemia. Um, I don't really know too much about that, but if you do know something uh, that I haven't mentioned here about CETP, and you'd like to mention it, please please feel free to mention it in the comment section and share your knowledge and understanding about this thing because I'm actually a little bit confused about it. So, um, yeah, share the knowledge if you've got it. Um, yeah, so that's basically it for what HDL does. Now, something that's important is the ratio of LDL to HDL. So LDL hanging out in the blood uh, can be damaging, of course, because of the oxidized LDL can become foam cells. Um, it can eventually leads to the formation of foam cells, whereas HDL kind of uh, reduces that possibility from happening, right? If it's taking the cholesterols out of these peripheral tissues and taking them back to the liver, that kind of reduces the possibility that, um, that LDL will end up hanging out in the blood. So um, something that's used as a diagnostic tool um, uh, in, in, in medicine is the LDL to HDL ratio. So if you have... Um, an LDL ratio, LDL to HDL ratio that's less than or equal to 3.5, that's considered good and healthy. And what that really means is that there, you have the right amount of cholesterol in your blood and in your cells, because um, basically you have a good amount of HDL per LDL. Okay, um, but if you have L, an LDL that's much higher than HDL, you're kind of overwhelming your ability to um, to to work in an anti-atherosclerotic fashion. So basically an LDL ratio, LDL to HDL ratio that's higher than 3.5 is considered bad. And this basically means that there's, a, that there's too much cholesterol in the blood and in the cells. The LDL is too high relative to the HDL. So you can kind of think about it as LDL kind of, um, the more LDL you have, the more likely it is that these, these uh, foam cells will form, and the more HDL that you have, the less likely it is that that's going to happen. So you kind of want more HDL um, uh, and, and less LDL in order to achieve uh, what would be considered a healthy ratio of less than 3.5. Um, now, I'm not by any means giving medical advice here. If you have any concerns about this stuff, definitely con consult your physician. Um, but these are just... Uh, uh, ratios that are are are, are used in in the field. Okay, I um, hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to share the video with anyone who you think might find it helpful. Thanks and happy studying.